What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for thelines.com, playpicks.com, and we are going to talk the Masters. It's Masters Week, one of my favorite times of the year. We're back in April after a November 2020 Masters, and man, let's get right down to business here. Uh, while we're here, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, like the video, give us the thumbs up, and in the comments, let us know who you're playing, man. Let us know what you think is going to walk away with the green jacket, because uh, pretty interesting this year. Huge field of really, really talented golfers. And, uh, you know, the younger guys really are really cranking it up and it is going to be an awesome, uh, awesome tournament watching this thing. So anyhow, as you see right here on your screen at the lines, we have a PGA tour power rankings with the masters here. You can come in, you can see, um, you know, all the details about the masters and you can look at the course preview. You can go ahead and see the power rankings on all the golfers and things like that. So while we are talking the, uh, the, the course preview here, 88 players in this event, top 50 in ties move on, and anyone within 10 strokes of the leader make the cut. We're talking about 7,475 yards plays at a par 72. As you know, bent grass greens, one note there. There are no green books allowed at the Masters. And there's a lot of talk right now about how that's going to affect Bryson DeChambeau. He really relies on that book um, and really, really helps him with his putting. That is not allowed at the the Masters, um, number 11, 12, 13, 15, and 16 all feature water. So when you're talking the back nine on Saturday or Sunday, things could really, really change with 11, 12, 13, 15, 16 all having water. So just remember that as we head into the, the final rounds there. The last two years have actually yielded the young, the, the lowest scores actually in, in Masters tournament history, 71.8 in 2019 and then 71.7 in November so you got to think that maybe they're going to make this a little bit harder this time because we're talking like up until 2018. So like from the early 30s until 2018, there was only one time this tournament played under par collectively for the whole tournament. So I'm guessing that they're going to try to make this thing a little bit harder. Um, Brooks Kepka is going to try to give it a go with that knee injury. So he is going to play. John Rahm is going to play as well because his baby came early. I know there were some questions out there. He is going to play. Tiger is out, of course, because of his injury that he had in the car crash. Um, one of the things that we're going to be looking at here, guys, and here's a, here's a breakdown of the course. You can see as you look down this breakdown, you can see par five scoring is going to be massive here at the tournament all five all four of the par fives play under par and so we need people who can score on these things they're all the easiest holes on the course as well so we need people who can go and attack these par fives you can see so we get to hole number two you're getting birdies 37 percent of the time you're even getting eagles 1.5 percent of the time you come down here now you're not getting eagles on eight but you're getting birdies 32 percent of the time you come down here to uh, 13, you're getting eagles 3.3% of the time. You're getting birdies 40% of the time. Four out of every 10 golfers are going to birdie this hole. And then you come down to 15, and you can see 2.8% of the time you're getting eagles, and then 39% of the time you're getting birdies. So again, we got to have guys that can score on par five. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking at. Over here on Data Golf, you can see one of the things that they, and historically that has worked well at Augusta, driving distance, huge here, approach. So it's really driving distance, an approach that are the main things now around the green it does play into, into factor, not really driving accuracy because the, the rough and all that penal. So um, it, around the green, tricky greens, fast greens. So you need to be good around the greens approach and then driving distance. So that's where we go here with me. Um, a little bit more about the tournament guys. Listen, uh, no one has won here in their first time, like as a debutante. Since 1979, when Fuzzy Zeller did that. So, just to give you an idea of guys that you maybe have been betting on here recently, Robert McIntyre, Carlos Ortiz, Will Zalatoris, who I've been betting on a ton, obviously. Will Zalatoris, if you've been listening to any of our podcasts and stuff. Uh, they're all first-timers here, so just keep that in mind if you wanted to bet those guys. No first-timers won here since 1979. Nobody's won back-to-back -back since Tiger did it in 2001-2002. So, we are... Uh, we're definitely talking about, um, definitely talking about a course that plays tough for people that don't have experience here, and then also just tough to to win back to back tournaments, regardless. And certainly, 
here at Augusta. So with all the things that we're looking for, this is the model that I drew up here. You can see driving distance. I weighted that 25%. Stroke gained off the tee. So I'm kind of doubling up here on the driving thing because, again, I think it's so incredibly important. So strokes gained off the tee at 15%. Strokes gained approach because, again, that was super, super important. 25%. Strokes gained par 5 because I think that that's where we're going to need to have our guys really make their hay here is scoring on those par 5s that are scorable around the green. Because, again, the greens are tricky. You need someone who's got a pretty good uh, game around the green. And three-putt avoidance, because of these greens being as you know, bent grass, as, as, as hard to putt on as it is anyway, and these greens are so tricky, I don't want guys that are just going to be putting it all over the place. So I didn't wait a ton, 3%. But, again, three-putt avoidance. The reason I weighted strokes gain approach so heavily in the last five Masters that have been played in April, so just take out the one um, from, from uh, November. This is from Justin Ray at 15th Club. The, the field leader in strokes gained approach has an average finish of 1.8. So you can see you're in the top five if you lead the field, if you're, if you're leading the field in strokes gained approach. So just think about that. Um, that's why we have approach so important here. So this is a 36 rounds run. John Rahm comes out on top, DJ, DeChambeau, Zala Torres, who again, we said is a debutante. So uh, I don't think I'm going to have, I might, be, I might bet him as top debutante if, there, if you can find that available, but. I don't think I'm going to bet him outright. Finau, Garcia, Shoffley, uh, Joaquin Neiman, Justin Thomas, Kepka, Rory, Cantlay, Bubba comes in at 13th. Hideki Matsuyama, Max Homa, Vic Hovland, Jordan Spieth, Matt Jones, Paul Casey, Matt Wallace. You can see those are the top 20 in the 36. Over here in the 24, so the last 24 rounds, Bryson actually comes out on top. Then Rom, DJ, Sergio, Zalatoris again, Kepka, Neiman, can't lay Homa. A lot of the same names just kind of change in places here, right? Xander, Spieth. You can see Spieth just playing so well recently. Jones, Thomas, Rory, Bubba, Vic Hovland, Finau, Kokrak comes in up here at 18th. Matt Wallace, Lanto Griffin at 20. Berger right outside the top 20 at 22. And then over here on, uh, this is the last 12 rounds, so really recent form. Bryson, Zalatoris, can't lay Kokrak all the way up at four. Um, Kepka, Rom, Casey, Garcia, Matt Wallace, Finau, Scheffler, um, Spieth, again, you know, everyone knows how good he's playing. Berger ends up over or up in the, the top 20 here. JT, Rory, Hideki Matsuyama, Lanto Griffin, Max Homa, again, showing up here. And then Cam Smith in the top 20. Joaquin Neiman, Victor Hoblin just right outside here because, again, they have uh, here very recently have slipped off just a little bit. So if we look at these odds here, guys, this is over on DraftKings. Dustin Johnson, 950, 1100 on Bryson, 1150 on Spieth, 1150 on JT, and 12 on Rom. Those are the only ones, Rory at 19, the only ones under 20. If you look over here at uh, at FanDuel, about the same odds here, except you can see Bryson much shorter over on FanDuel than he is over on DraftKings. Um, JT, 11. And then Rory up at 19, everybody else 22 or more over here at MGM. About the same deal. You can see DJ at 9, Bryson 11, Rom 11, Spieth 11, JT 11. Rory's at 18 here, and then everybody else 20 or more. So we go back to the models here, and this is where the betting card gets started, guys. So, you know, one of the things, and I do want to just touch on this. I'm not going to have a ticket on Jordan Spieth, but if you saw in this model, here's Spieth in 36 rounds. He's inside the top 20 for me and all the things that I find important. Spieth over here at 11th at 24 rounds, and then and then he's up here again, you know, as we were talking about whenever I was looking um, at 12 rounds as well. So, look, here's the thing about Spieth. Of the players of master history with 20 or more rounds played, Spieth has the lowest scoring average of all time. And that is not a joke. Jordan Spieth has the lowest scoring average of everybody at the Masters. He is he plays incredibly well at this course. He's the hottest golfer in the world. He's on a heater. The only problem with me is that you could have had him three weeks ago at like 50. You could have had him two weeks ago at like 35. And you could have had him last week at way more than 11 and a half. And so it's just very hard for me to pull the trigger on Spieth just knowing that I missed the best numbers that I was looking at. Now, if you – look, money's money. So if you want to bet Spieth, I will, not, I, will, I will not look down on you in the least bit. I just can't do it because I missed out on, you know, so much value on him. So it can't happen for me. 
First guy that makes my cards, John Rahm. Love John Rahm this week. Listen, he's inside the top 30 in every single one of the models that I have. Of course, the number one guy here in my 36-round model. If you take a look, man, driving distance in this field over the last 36 rounds, he's 11th. Fourth in strokes gained off the tee. Eighth in strokes gained approach. Sixth in scoring on par fives. Around the green, he's at least in the top 30, which is super manageable, and he doesn't three-putt. It's everything I'm looking for in a guy in this tournament. Oh, by the way, three straight top 10 finishes here for him, gaining 2.7 strokes on the field um, in his career at Augusta. John Rahm, love him, love him this week. I made two bets months ago. So I do want to let y'all know which those are. I bet Vic Hovland and I bet Colin Morikawa. So look, this was trying to get, I was trying to beat the number. And I, I did get a better number than you can get now, but not that much because they both kind of have been a little bit streaky here. So Vic Hovland won in December and that's when I made the bet in January. Then he went T2, T5, T2 and three straight starts at the Farmers, the Genesis and the Workday. And then just fell apart at the Honor Palmer. He like shoots... First first two rounds under par, completely falls apart on the weekend. And then he got cut at the players. Morikawa won the work day in late February, but he's been all over the place, which I actually kind of like that he's been all over the place with Morikawa. I mean, like, you know, the up and the down. He's, like, he's winning tournaments, and he's also getting cut from tournaments. I'm okay with the volatility. My style, my gambling style is okay with, with that type of player. Um, but what Morikawa does for me is – we're talking about how these tricky these greens are and how you need to be kind of close and, and not really deal with the craziness of these uh, these greens. And he is just a marksman with his irons. And so I uh, really, really love Morikawa. Um, even though the volatility, again, Hovland not playing well here the last couple of tournaments, uh, hopefully he can regain form as well. Uh, the next bet that I did make here recently, though, Daniel Berger is, um, is another guy that I have on the uh, – on my card, apparently my dog loves Daniel Berger as well. Um, he, What happens with Berger is he does everything well. He doesn't do anything awesome. He just does everything well. And with that, he just he climbs my model basically in every single one of the versions. And so you can see in the 36-round 36, um, 36 version here, he's down here at the 30th, right? But then we come to the 24, and if we search for him there, we see him here at 22nd. And then when we get to the 12th, 12 round version of this model of the things I'm looking for, he's up here at 14th. So he's in the best form right now, recently, in all the things that I'm looking for in a player for this tournament. So I do really like that a ton. Four top tens in his past seven starts. So uh, Daniel Berger, a little bit under the radar, but a guy that I like as well this week. Jason Kokrak is another guy um, that I'm going to be, that I'm going to have on my card this week. Listen, this is a guy that <laughs> I was fortunate enough to to be on him at 80-1 to 1 whenever he won um, the CJ Cup in, in, in Vegas. And listen, all this guy has done is gone out, listen, T9 at the players, T8 at the Arnold Palmer, T9 at the WGC concession. Like, this guy can get in the top 10. Now, I'm going to bet him outright, but listen, with all these guys, I'm also playing the alternative markets as well, right? So what we have here is, especially in this one with drafting, I mean, you can bet top 40s, top 30s, top 20s, and then, of course, as we as we always do, you know, you can bet these the, the winner in the top fives and top 10s. So I am all over, you know, betting the alternative markets for these guys as well. And so while we can get co-crack at a at a big number right i mean like we can get him at 90 to 1 to win this tournament that's more of a smaller type bet to have in the account at 90 to 1 but do i think this guy could get into the top 10 here definitely in the top 20 absolutely so you know investing in co-crack in a top 20 bet still pays you over two to one you're getting plus 225 on him here as a, as a top 20 bet so really like that as well and uh, the final guy that I have here making the card, Max Homa. Um, listen, Max is a guy, if we take a look at, at these models that I've run with Max Homa, is uh, one thing that I really, really like about Homa is if you look right here, he's basically just 
even Steven across the board. And that's what I, I actually really like that about him. It's not one of those things where he does one thing really well, he does one thing poorly, and I need that one thing to really play that week. It's more with Homa that he just does everything pretty good across the board. You can see at the 24 uh, round model, he's all the way up here at ninth, And you can see like... He did actually score very, very well in par fives. But the rest of the stuff, he's just kind of there, you know, with everybody else. And so um, looking forward to Max Homa with a big performance here in the, at the Masters this week. And again, not necessarily, and I will have outrights on all these guys that I'm talking about, but not necessarily like making that a, a you know, one of my one of my big bets, right? Like I'm looking more towards because you're getting him at 100 to 1, right? But um, I'm looking more in the top 20 market, top 30 market, because even in the top 30 market for Max Homa, if you take a look, you're still getting plus 125. So it's more than even money for him to for him to be in the top 30 in this tournament. Of course, over at the top 20, same deal, plus 275. So, again, play these alternative markets, guys, because that's one of the things that can help you build your bankroll along the way. If you're only betting outrights, it's going to be real tough. It's hard to hit outrights. There's 88 players in this tournament, right? It's very hard to hit an outright, but it's uh, much easier to help not only win money each tournament, but to keep your bankroll consistent whenever you're playing these alternative markets as well. So, again, I mean, guys that I got money on, I got Rom, Hovland, Morikawa, Berger, Kokrak, and Homa might add another before this thing gets going on Thursday morning, but those are the ones I feel the most confident in. In head-to-heads, uh, I'm going to be fading Rory yet again. I mean, listen, Rory is, has been honest with us. He's told us that he's just not a uh, – he doesn't, doesn't feel like he can find his swing right now. I can't put four rounds together, and with that, I'm going to take him at his word, and there's a lot of head-to-heads that you can find against him. And so with that, I'm going to be going up, and, and I'm going to be playing against Rory, you know, and so – You'll be able to find, um, you'll be able to find him, you know, all all over the place at any of your, you know, any of the books that you're, you know, him against Rom. Uh, give me the one fifty two juice on Rom all all day long. Like I will be playing that until the cows come home. You know, I mean, there's just no, no way in the world that I wouldn't be playing, um, playing that. And then so, again over here him him against Cantlay even I mean yeah I'm playing Cantlay so any place that I can fade Rory I'm going to be fading Rory for sure in these head-to-heads and I think he probably should too the guy's been honest with us said he can't find a swing right now doesn't have a ton of confidence and could he go out and win the thing could I mean he's one of the most talented golfers in the world he could but uh you know I'm going to take him at his word one of the other interesting bets over here at MGM just wanted to point this out to you just in case it was something you were interested in the big five which is DJ DeChambeau, Justin Thomas, Rahm, and Spieth versus the field. So basically, you can take these guys at plus 125 or the field at 175. Of course, the field is the logical bet to make, but you're getting you're getting the most talented golfer in the world, the uh, longest hitter in the world, the best iron, one of the best iron players, uh, one of the definitely one of the most uh, uh, stroke gain approach best in, in the in the world over the last three months. Rom, who I already told you, I think is going to win the tournament. And then the hottest golfer in the world in Jordan Spieth. So again, just uh, another little fun bet. Maybe if you wanted to take a look at that, that's over at MGM called the big five versus the rest of the field. You can actually take a look over here at the lines at all of the uh, most popular prop bets that are going on over at MGM. So that we have that as an article as well. And of course you can get the full breakdown over here as well. Guys, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the uh, comments who you're going to be playing. Go ahead and give us a like on this thing as well. And uh, you know what? If you tell us, tell us who you think is going to win, we'll randomly pick. If you if you get it right, we'll randomly pick someone. We'll send you an Amazon gift card. Uh, if you get it right, who wins the Masters this week? Put it in the comments. You got to like the video. You got to be a subscriber to win. But if you have all those things and you pick who wins this week, uh, we'll send you an Amazon gift card. We'll pick someone randomly for that. Appreciate it, guys, and uh, good luck on all your bets at the Masters.